Hi scholars, let's look at Teek 4.5a. I can represent multi-step problems involving the four operations with whole numbers using strip diagrams and equations with a letter standing for the unknown quality. Quantity. So represent means to show using pictures multi-step problems meaning you might do subtraction and then division or addition and then multiplication or something like that involving the four operations so addition subtraction multiplication or division whole numbers using strip diagrams strip diagrams they're the rectangles and then equations with a letter standing for the unknown quality quantity sorry so there will be whatever you are looking for as your answer you're gonna put T for total, A for answer, J for James, however many James has to as the unknown quantity. So before I even begin with multi-step problems, I'm going to first start talking about each operation on its own and what the representation looks like, and then we will slowly combine. So let's get started. I want to talk about a simple math problem such as 25 plus 36 equals 61. We're not worried about a word problem right now. We are just concerned on how do you represent this in strip diagrams with a letter standing for the own unknown quantity. So let's pretend this is what we're looking for. Okay, I'm just going to put a question mark, question mark for answer. So you basically have two parts you are combining those two parts and you're getting your total. When you have two parts and they are being added, you put them next to each other. Okay, now because 36 is a larger number than 25, it would be a little bit longer. Okay, just by a little. So when I have 25 and 36 together, I am showing this top rectangle up here is the total of 25 plus 36. So this is how you represent just an addition problem. So instead of a question mark for the answer, I might put, you know, T for total. It can just be T for total. Or if I say so-and-so has 25 pencils, she bought 36 more pencils, how many total pencils does she have? You can use the letter P. So-and-so has 25 erasers. She bought 36 more erasers the next day. How many erasers does she have now? You could use E for erasers. You know, it doesn't always have to be the letter T. But just know that the letter represents what you're looking for. So now let's look at what multiplication looks like because multiplication and addition go hand in hand. Okay, so suppose I have a multiplication question that says she has four bags with 25 pencils in each bag. How many total pencils does she have? Okay, so, you know, think of a picture, four bags. Pretend these are all very close to the same size. 25 pencils in each bag. How many total pencils does she have? Okay. So what you need to realize is even though this looks like 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, it's also four groups of 25. And so when I look at this representation, I think of 25 times 4. Or if I'm given 25 times 4, I can represent it with four boxes of 24. Think about it. When you first learned multiplication, you know, like, oh, you know, scholars, what's 4 times 3? You are probably told, well, I have four groups. Each group has three. The total is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You had to draw four groups and put three in each group. Same thing. You have four groups. You put 25 in each group. That's all it is. So this representation um, sh represents, shows um, multiplication. You can do 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, but like if the math problem says they have four bags of whatever or four groups of whatever, four classrooms with 25 students each, this is how you would represent it. 
So multiplication only and addition math problems only look very similar. They both have the same thing. Your groups are down here or whatever you're combining and your total goes at the top. So now we're going to look at subtraction and division. Suppose I have 95, I don't know, 95 pencils again, and I gave away 42. How many pencils do I have left? Okay, so this is different because if I use the addition model, sorry, 95 is more than 42. If I use the addition model, this looks like saying 95 and 42 together make this number. When you know 95 is what you start with, 42 is what you're taking away, what is left. So essentially, if you think of fact families, it's 42 plus something equals 95, correct? Think about it. If you had 2 or 5 minus 3 equals 2, your fact family is 2 plus 3 equals 5, right? So your addition representation would be 3 and 2 equals 5. Does that make sense? So my subtraction representation would still be 5 up here. I'm taking away 3. What's my answer? You are taking the fact family of the subtraction problem and trying to put it as an addition problem. But you have another part missing. So... If I had 95 to begin with, or let's put it this way. I'm going to just go ahead and solve, okay? So the answer is 53, okay? But this is going to be my, my, the letter P, okay? So 42 plus 53 equals 95. So if I were to do the addition problem, think about it. 42 would go here, 53 would go here, right? And then 95 goes there. But since it's subtraction, I have 95 total. 42 was given away. How much do I have left? That's all it is. You're, you're taking the addition problem of that, the fact family as addition in that subtraction problem, and you're like, well, um, in, in the addition problem, 95 went up here. So if it's subtraction, 53 is what I'm looking for, so I take away 53. So in subtraction, you have a total already there. You're taking a part away of that total, and you're looking for the missing piece. So missing piece plus the piece that you have equals the total. So now let's look at division. So let's think about division. Let's say so-and-so had 48 pencils. She split it up among eight groups. How many are in each group? Okay, so division looks a lot like subtraction, but it's also the fact family of multiplication. So I'm going to just go ahead and solve, okay? I know the answer is 6. So my fact family would be 8 times 6 equals 48. So I'm going to use that to help me kind of start my representation. So 8 groups of 6. Okay. Now there's a total of 48. So 8 times 6, or 6 times 8, equals 48. Now, let's focus on the division. 48 divided into 8 groups, how much in each group? So, I would actually 
erase this and put G for each group or the number of pencils in each group or whatever you want to call it. And so when you look at this, this is a division representation. You're starting off with 48 pencils and you are splitting it up into eight groups. How many in each group? So division is the opposite of multiplication, but its representation is very close to subtraction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an addition and multiplication problem side by side so you can see them and a subtraction and division side by side so you can see them. Okay, so let's look at an addition problem and a sub, uh, multiplication problem. So if I have 43 plus 21 plus 16, how do I represent that? Well, you have something in the 40s, something in the 20s, which is about half of that, and then 16. So 43, 21, 16, when you put them all together, you're going to get your total. Okay, now what if I had 21 times 6? I'm still looking for a total because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 groups of 21. And when you put them all together, you're getting a total. So notice how multiplication and addition representations look very similar. Now, this is only an addition question, so that's what it would look like. I will be going on about if it's an addition and subtraction question or addition and division question or whatever. So that will look a little different. But just looking at a multiplication and addition only, they are very, very similar. In multiplication, it's repeated addition. And then regular addition, it's just, you know, your three different groups or four different groups or two different groups. Okay, let's look at this subtraction problem. You start off with 81. You're taking away 26, you're taking away 7, what do you have left over? So I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then I'm going to show you how it ties in with addition, but then also how it ties in with division right now, later. So <clears throat> 81 is what I'm starting with. Notice this already does not look like the addition um, representations that I showed you earlier. Okay, then... There's like a group of 26, there's a group of 7, and then the question is, what is left over? Now, if I did an addition representation, it would be this plus this plus this equals this. So let's just do that. L plus 7 plus 26 equals 81. So I would be solving for this, technically, right? So I would have to show this plus this plus this equals the total, which we know is 81. So I'll just put 81 back there again. So L plus 7 plus 26 equals 81. So a subtraction representation looks like an addition representation, in this, but in the sense that we have the total already. So they're just flip-flopped. And then division, it's the same thing. You start with a total, and you have four groups, and you want to know how much in each group. So the answer is 10. We know that. So 10 times 4 equals 40. So if you think about it, 10, 10, 10, 10 equals 40. So these uh, division and subtraction both start the same way, but then whatever its fact family is, that also works into it. Be sure to watch part two to continue learning.